but it's Harrison who gets the quick transition from here. He likes to push it forward to get Hopkins going to the goal. And there he goes. Harrison, fast break, textbook. He's got Connor Ford looking down low. The foul shot in the thick mud. Whoa, what was Connor Ford thinking? This field has been rained on for seven days. He had an open look at the net and tried to bounce the first shot. The bounce shot is not going to be an option because the lacrosse ball is going to get stuck in the quagmire and the mud. You talk about an easy, easy confidence building save for Tillman Johnson off that aggressive faceoff move by Kyle Harrison. Harrison did exactly what he has done to so many people this year. And getting that face off started to the fast break area. This is Kyle Dixon setting up that first midfield unit. Shannon, Dixon, Rotelli in the midfield. Ward, Christmas, and Yaboli starting on the attack for Virginia. This is the freshman, six foot four, Dixon. Back to Johnny Christmas. Kicking the ball around to Rotelli up top. Hopkins will play a man-to-man -man and a zone defense this afternoon and mix it up off of timeouts. Down to the low post position as they work it up. Shannon staying low, who's on the far side. You see Rotelli in the middle, 25. Great All-American Rotelli. Three years he started for this team. He's in the middle. This will be trouble. Slides coming. He takes the hard shot. Rotelli gets the first goal of the game. It's 1-0 Virginia. Rotelli, the senior from Rhode Island, sparking Virginia on their first possession. You'll see defenders slip in super slow-mo. You see him get some traction, and he beats the left-hander share to the upper corner. Chris Rotelli, a true warrior, an old-school midfielder. Not only can he score goals, but he also plays defense and scoops up loose balls at the midfield. Great location against a left-handed uh, goalie, Quint. He put it right in the upper right corner, fully aware of where the weak spot was. I think one of the keys, which team reacts to the adverse field conditions? And that time you saw Hopkins' defender slip, and the recovery wasn't there. All right, different face-off man. That's Pizer in there against De Villiers, and De Villiers comes up with a quick, clean face-off win. So Harrison did his job. This time, De Villiers does his. Johnny Christmas inside the defense, but the check takes it right at Pizer goes on a fast break the other way. Christmas was slowed in the semifinal game, held scoreless for the first time this season. He's a speed dodger. The guy is an absolute road runner, speed merchant, and this field slows him down. Greg Pies with the freshman, number 20, holds the ball as the midfields change. Offensive players come on, defensive players vacate. This is Adam Doniger, that first unit. Harrison, Doniger, and Ford will join Barry, Bobby Benson, and Peter Lasore. Virginia bumping all three of their long poles up to cover the midfielders and putting the short stick on Lasore and Bob Benson in the slot. Lasore takes the ball down deep, goes to the right hand, takes a shot against Tillman Johnson. Not much angle. Two pretty low percentage shots to start off the offense for Hopkins, and Johnson was right there on both of them. Field soggy and wet. We'll give you a closer look at that momentarily, but look at the pushing here at MT Bank Stadium. Tough ground balls, quick, the field mushy and soft. Bobby Benson picks it up, goes into the sword. He stepped on the sideline. Good aggressive play over there by Virginia. It'll go to Virginia. Take a look at Cher. Tremendous year he's had, as steady as anybody in the country. I think consistent would be the word to use. And when you're talking about Rob Cher, last year as a junior, he lost his starting spot to Nick Murtha. Murtha went on to become a first team All-American, but from a character building standpoint, Rob Sher has really matured emotionally and between the pipes. Quint soft field today, a six foot one goalie in Tillman, a five foot eight goalie in Sher. Does this favor these conditions this day? A it, taller goalie? To me, it's all about shot location. Connor Ford with the earlier bounce shot in the mud, ineffective. And Lasor that time with a severe angle shot. Really no way you're going to beat Tillman Johnson if he holds his pipes. That word behind over to Yoboli. Joe Yoboli kicks the ball up top now. This is AJ Shannon, the first midfield back out there from Virginia. He fells more contested along with you for this division. Division one championship exclusively on ESPN. One to nothing, Virginia leads. Moments ago, Rotelli put it in. Shannon, such a threat to the left-handed side. And he'll be matched up with Benson Irwin. The top defensive midi with a short stick on the hockey side. Shannon, the left-hander from Whitby, Ontario. Double team went inside and they just knock it out from danger. The double team came fast and furious from Chris Watson. Inside, it's Christmas to Shannon. They drew the slide. Shannon makes it 2 nothing, Virginia. Two shots, two goals. A.J. Shannon with the finish, but this 
play is set up by the speed of John Christmas. Look at him, he draws the double team. A little confusion defensively for Hopkins. Shannon flashes towards the near post. There's no help. Too much attention for John Christmas. Not enough on the left-handed sharpshooter from Whitby, Ontario, a guy who honed his game on the small goals of box lacrosse in Canada. The senior has put up an awful lot of goals in his career at Virginia. Quinn, I don't remember as much Christmas up top in the semifinal. It's a new look for Virginia against the defense of Hopkins. I think it's a smart look given the footing. You need north-south dodging on this field, not east-west moves. Lou Braun in to take the face off for Hopkins, and it's Harder that comes up or tries to get the loose ball. So three face-offs, three different guys. Watch out. Hopkins has got some motion and some numbers, but they throw it out of bounds. That would have been scary. Let's go down to our broadcast partner, Joe Beninati, on the sideline. Leif, uh, folks had better get used to those nice, uh, clean-looking jerseys because they won't be clean for long. They're going to get soiled in a, a hurry. A lot of this field right now is soupy. It's muddy. It's murky. Some places downright look like quicksand. Despite the best efforts of the grounds crew here at M&T Bank Stadium, they work till 2 in the morning to try and drain this field. It's a gravity-draining field. There are no pumps to help, and this field is going to be an issue for the shooters more than anything else. Whether or not you can get good footing to uncork the Shot. Meanwhile, Declare, thank you very much, Joe. A foul on John Crispus is going to give Hopkins a chance to get their first goal of the game. The riding game in lacrosse, just like four checking in hockey. Crispus trying to prevent the clear, got his stick up high, and he will hit Greg Pizer right there in the grill in the face. So one minute had things going their way, two nothing they lead, but this is a chance for Hopkins to get the first goal and just basically knock this thing up. There is John Crispus. In the box. The extra man for Hopkins. Very scary, Quince. That's all about alignment, assignment, and that these players now, for the second year in a row, this unit remained intact. The passing is absolutely precise. Dublin Johnson not really tested on the first two shots of this game by Hopkins. He'll get a test here, I can assure you, as this offense gets set to lock and load on Tillman Johnson. Good rotation. Lasor behind the goal. Into the crease area. Kyle Berry. It catches somebody's foot. It goes out of bounds, it'll be Virginia ball. It caught a bad break, a defenseman's foot looks like it caught that ball, it went wide of the net. Virginia not clear very cleanly, and this is huge, but you thought clearing, riding might be a factor. Rotelli, the all-in-one player, he plays great defense, he rides, he clears, he does it all, and he gets that ball off sides against Virginia. Two mistakes in a row. They give Hopkins yet another chance. They were short-handed. And they were only allowed to send two over the midfield line as Petromala and Starshi now. A little chess match on this riding and clearing game. I, I thought I saw a little vulnerability in Virginia's clearing game in their quarterfinal matchup with Georgetown and on Saturday in the semifinals against Maryland. Boland brings the ball in. Back to Lasort. This is yet another shot against a man short unit. Six against five. See the time riding down. Here they come, and now it is an even strength situation. Boland out there with Downer. Kind of a mixed set of offensive stars for Hopkins right now. Adam Downer right here with a big right hand. This guy could be a fullback, a tight end on most football teams. He's got a matchup with Gladding, top defensive star. And watch the double check come in and just put Boland to the turf. Here comes Virginia on the clear. It was Ned Bowen and Trey Whitty. A very underrated Virginia defense this year. You talk about experience. Between the trio of Bowen, Berman, and Brett Hughes, they have started a total of 148 games. That is a lot. These guys have been together for three years, and I think that continuity. Another whistle on the sideline. Another offsides against Virginia, and they're giving the ball back to Petromala's team. Two mental mistakes off of just basic substitution plays where your defensive specialists run off and your offensive middies step on. They've done everything right except those mental mistakes. They keep giving Hopkins another shot at Tillman Johnson. That will burn them eventually. Team's even strength. Second unit on the field. For the Blue Jays, Boland, Pizer, McDermott. Another unit that really can kill you, led by... Really, Kevin Bowling, who is tremendous with his vision of the field. Kyle Berry driving the right. He's going to spin and shoot. Picked up easily by Tillman Johnson. He looks for the outlet pass. Cannot get 
a clean connection. They give the ball away. Dave Berman on the sideline. How many times can you give it back to the explosive offense and not get burned? Three unforced errors off of clears. Dylan Johnson shakes his head. He made the nice save. Take a look at the weather conditions. 59 degrees, cloudy, rainy, soggy. Joe Beninati showed you that, but let me tell you, folks, it's been raining for one week. That's seven days. This whole town is soaked to the gills, and this field has held up a little bit under some very tough situations. Not raining now, though. Overcast and slippery. Pizer gets double teamed. A lot of quick double teams coming as they push the ball up. Gladding trying to collect it. Can't get it cleanly. Finally does. All the way across is Kenny. Kenny waving for it, and he gets it near side. Down the middle, you'll see him finally control the ball. Quint four times. Hopkins had a shot to make a mental error pay for itself, and Virginia gets away with it. Virginia's defense, so I like the way they're playing right now. They're packed in pretty tight. They're handling their one-on-one -on -one matchups. They will double-team certain players, and other players are going to say, hey, you can take the shot on Tillman Johnson because we don't respect your shot. That time was an excellent double-team on Greg Pizer. This is Foster Gilbert, one of the great freshmen for Virginia, the second unit in. Christmas has some room. Goes up top as they kick the ball around from Poskate to the far side. Billy Gladding. Goes to the far corner, and the ball stays in the field. You saw it just stick in the mud. Second like unit of Gladding, Gilbert, Poskin. Hopkins switching up from a zone to a man-to-man. -man. Excellent ball movement by Virginia. This is Joe Yaboli. Started as a freshman, now as a sophomore, experienced. Big checks by Tom Garvey on him. Ball lost in the middle. The kidney of the quagmire, the stuff they put in there to soak up the moisture. And a push call, it'll go back to Virginia. They actually a hold on Chris Watson. Quick whistle. The game is moving fast. The whistle. Ball blown in. The whole defenseman slipped on the far side. It was Bolden who lost his footing, and the shot was wide open. The field conditions, whichever team can handle the adversity and the chaotic play that results when your teammate falls. That team's going to be best suited to carry home the gold trophy today. Gavoli on Garby. Up top, Virginia. Foster Gilbert. In close. Gladding can't get a pass. The guy's parked on the crease. Oh, Gladding was wide open in the middle. He took the shot low, and that mud in the feet will slog it up. Numbers for Hopkins. Into the middle, Benson Irwin looking to the wing. Gets it to Bowling. Now. Virginia packs back in as Lasore goes to Bobby Benson. They'll settle it down and look for a fresh unit to come in. Excellent defensive recovery by Foster Gilbert, who just turned and sprinted in the hole. Hopkins had an advantage. He had a six-on-four advantage right there, but Virginia's hustling midfielders taking that away. Billy Glanning making another mistake with that low shot. But we see each team do it. Anything in low is going to stop about two feet from where you let it go. Doniger, the first unit in with Harrison, number 18, Doniger, number 25. Such a workhorse, a strong offensive player who likes to extend his arms and get the high heart shot. He could be one of the guys capable of stinging the hot Tillman Johnson. Looking for the sideline from his offensive coordinator, Seth Tierney. Here he comes with that shot, and Johnson got a piece of it. Up to Billy Gladden. Now the interference with the goaltender, free clear. Bob Benson. Watch this save. Johnson just locked his radar. He sees it very patient on his line, and that's an easy one because it's on his stick side. It's his third save. He has not been tested at all. I don't think Hopkins has thrown a quality shot at him yet. They will come. I guarantee you Hopkins known for huge runs and tremendous offense, the leading offense in the country. So get ready for those fireworks, folks. I'm sure Tillman Johnson is. Rotelli, the first unit back in for Virginia. Shannon, Dixon, Rotelli. The two seniors with Dixon, the freshman. Working with Ward, the freshman. Christmas and Yavoli, just sophomores, but they played all last year with Connor Gill. They are very seasoned. This is Rotelli. The defense falls down. He has an opening, but they slide off. They give Benson Irwin the job of going one-to-one -one with Rotelli. Do they like this matchup? They move the ball quickly. A.J. Shannon! Again, he goes low, and folks, there is nothing to be gained by going into the mud. Virginia has done it two times in a row. Benson Irwin. That ball took a tricky hop. It actually skimmed, and Cher was down to smother it, and it kicked up and caught him in the chest. Inside, Hopkins, and Tillman Johnson again against Kyle Berry with an unbelievable save, just like we saw in the semifinals, single-handedly turning back Hopkins. 
applying a little bit of pressure. Crispus wheels it back to the young guy, Ward, and Yaboli will settle up on the far side. That save was absolutely sick. Kyle Barry had him dead to rights. Multiple fakes up and down, and then he tried to reach around. Johnson splitting reaches all the way across his body. AJ Shannon setting up Benson Irwin on the right-hander shooter side. He loves the left, but he can go right if he wants to. Kicking it out to Rotelli. Extension, and the shot picked up by Harded Stick, but Ward gets it out of the air. Ward looks for cutters. Matt Ward from Landon wheeling in the slide, coming double team now. He kicks it up to Shannon now over, and Rotelli will calm things down. Ward tied up well by Watson, then he got some help from Pizer. Remember, Ward on Saturday was the hero for Virginia. Four goals. Shannon with the right hand comes in off the foot of Cher, and that will be goal number three for Virginia. You talk about an emotional turnaround from the save of Tillman Johnson. These two goalies going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but Johnson wins this round clearly. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. That is a brilliant, brilliant save. Now watch Rob Shear get a piece of this shot. Shannon, the lefty, switching to his right hand. And let me tell you, that's one you've got to make in championship play. Shannon, five-hole between the wickets. He's got two. Virginia now up by three. Fast starts are critical for Virginia. Sometimes that's been a problem. Lou Braun takes this face off. Joe Beninati, what do you got on the sideline? More stunned silence early for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. They didn't have a fast start against Syracuse in their semifinal win. On the other side for Virginia, they're jumping for joy. All that team unity, a sensational ovation for Tillman Johnson off that last stop on Kyle Barry. You can really school your team, Quint, on a lot of X's and O's, but there's nothing your coach can do to prepare you for the sensational efforts of a guy like Johnson. It was their best shot, choreographed to perfection, but Kyle Barry's got to bury that ball with confidence and give Tillman Johnson credit. Second unit in, Posca takes a shot, tries to bounce it off that fresh grass, and a nice save by Cher. Barnett's down in front. He actually got dirt kicked up into his face mask, and it temporarily blinded him. And, and they're Official on the near side, Hans Wittelsberger sees that. Now, what they've put down here is diamond dust. And you can look at his face. He got all that dirt kicked up off of one of the sticks into his eyes on that wild scramble. Gary Horseman, Hopkins trainer, have to flush that out. Loose ball in front, it's a quagmire. Better today, and then right there, you see the dirt come flying back in Corey Harnett's eyes. Big hit by Garvey, Harnett. A former attackman at Sachem High School on Long Island switched to the long stick position, and he was really one of the transition threats that Hopkins showed in the semifinals. So they'll wash him down, get him back in soon. He is such a critical part of that transition team and the long stick defense, but good save by Cher, continuing to be tested by Virginia. Virginia's ball movement, uh, excellent. They're spacing, they're getting good shots, and they're pressing towards a high percentage shot. They've only taken five, but they got three goals. A set clearing situation for Hopkins in the blue and white. Virginia with their orange and blue. Number one, Hopkins against the number two team, Virginia. They've kind of went that way most of the season. Explosive offenses as Peter Lasor settles it for Hopkins. Gladdy, Billy Gladdy extending on him. Good short stick defender. One of the best two-way players in that he will take the ball from the defensive end to the offensive end anytime he gets a chance. The tradition of the old influence. This is Kyle Harrison, tremendous speed, hard to get up front. Trey Whitty trying to stay with him. Whitty working his right hand, giving him his left. Whitty very aggressive on the perimeter. Steps out. Kyle Harrison, known for his change of direction, his ability to stutter step and burst to the goal. And again, like John Christmas, this surface not really favorable for a Dodger like Harrison. Now Barry up top. Uh-oh, inside. Barry's got some room. He takes it high and hard above the cage. Backed up by Virginia. Smart play by the Cavaliers. Gentlemen, Johnson with four saves, but that save against Barry, when you talk about the emotional component to this game, that save is worth two or three goals, especially in that Shannon then converted on the next possession. And Ned Bowen doing the little things last time, running that ball out, getting possession for Virginia. As they clear the ball up to Rotelli, a little bit of space as he cracks through that defense. 
Takes the left-handed shot, backed up by John Christmas. It'll be a possession for Virginia. Hopkins lost the man-on-man -man matchup there. Rotelli recognized and just split the D. These two teams played on March 22nd in Baltimore. Hopkins went up five to nothing, shut this Virginia team out for the first 34 minutes of the game, and then held off a, a furious Cavalier rally. But right now, this game is being controlled by Virginia. When you talked about A.J. Shannon in our pregame, you talked about how important he would be. They really put the ball in his stick a lot today, initiating from the wing. Shot by Ward on the far side, and backed up by Virginia. So Shannon is getting all the attention, initiating many times. To me, Shannon's a guy who, because of his size, he's over six foot, almost 220 pounds. He doesn't need the kind of traction. He's a power dodger, a guy who's gonna drop his shoulder, use his hips, and back himself into the cage. And his shooting accuracy with, the, with that left hand is absolutely lethal. Hopkins really doesn't have a great matchup for him, a big body that can shut him down. Not many teams do. Shannon with 30 goals. That's most and most attackmen, more than most attackmen. That's not stupid. I'm not distracted. I'm not slow. I'm not dumb. Millions of kids have learning difficulties and are struggling in school. Without help, they could suffer the rest of their lives. If your child is struggling, visit focusonlearning.org. Do it for your child. Do it for yourself. But do it now. I'm not dumb. I'm smart. I don't want her to be labeled. He's just like I was in school. It's just a phase. You'll get over it. Millions of kids have learning difficulties and are struggling in school. But instead of excuses, they need help. They learn differently. See how far your child can go. Visit focusonlearning.org. Do it for your child. Do it for yourself. But do it now. defense guy who can get it in transition. Now Billy Gladding with the ball. And that's where Trey Witte can really step out and become a pivotal defenseman in that on these field conditions, McDermott's running down the sideline. Witte's got the green light to come out and throw some checks, and he does that and gets the ball down on the ground. And that is a real difference maker, that defensive play right there. Hopkins yet to hit their comfort zone. They've had some opportunities. Four mistakes in a row by Virginia. Midway through that quarter, Quint, Hopkins just couldn't capitalize on it, maybe thinking a little bit too much about the great Tillman Johnson. First midfield, this is Rotelli initiating from the midfield. Goes a far side, and Dixon tried to wheel back. The loose surface puts the ball down, and the quick John Christmas gets that loose ball. Shannon, he's caused problems. Benson Irwin matching up on him. His left hand's lethal, takes the shot, and it goes wide. Such a deceptive motion coming off that dodge. Field conditions, are they deteriorating, Joe? Well, they are, Leaf, and it's important that you make sure. The 5 8 
dance variety. A little goes a long way in this regard. Some guys are sliding and slipping and not enjoying life out there. It is tough conditions. It's been that way all through the weekend as rain has come down for about a week here in the Maryland area. Rotelli trying to push in, but Ben Sterling doing a wonderful job of pushing it beyond the plane. Skipping a pass, Shannon with the rocket. Shannon has taken over the game. He's got a hat trick. Shannon from Rotelli. The two seniors hook up. What a wicked shot. You see Shannon on the right wing. He'll catch, set his feet, and then lift. Low to high, singes the corner. Just an absolute unsavable. And Rob Scher can only shake his head. AJ Shannon just shooting lights out. Right? from coast to coast to see the best in the game. The weather is now cooperating. It couldn't get any better on this historical weekend. Lee Felsmo, Quinn Kessnick, Quinn, the first half was electric. Virginia got off to a strong start behind the play of Chris Rotelli and the finishing skills of Matt Ward. They led 4 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Well, Harden was the big story on the faceoff. Really got some of that run going. That was the third of three straight goals. Tillman Johnson came out on fire, continuing his strong performance off the semifinals. And Trey Whitty and the Virginia defense had all the answers. But then you saw a little energy and a little fight back for Hopkins behind Pizer, their defenseman. It started off with a nice run by Virginia, but we knew Hopkins would come on. They did. Quint, talk about your cues to victory for each of these two teams. I think the key for Virginia is to avoid the Johns Hopkins run. And we've seen a Hopkins run of three goals. That is the signature of Johns Hopkins. Now, Virginia needs to get some transition scoring. That starts with the play of Trey Whitty, Billy Gladding, and Chris Rotelli. For Hopkins, to me, it's about the seniors. Adam Doniger and Bob Benson, they have been involved with half of Hopkins' goals so far. They are the inside outside threat. And then finally, the special teams for Johns Hopkins this year uh, have been terrific. Number one in the nation in terms of extra man and man down efficiency. And I believe they have one extra man goal, Doniger's goal, from the outside. Well, it promises to be an unbelievable second half. The two best teams in the country have one half left to decide the championship. We'll be back to M&T Bank in just a moment. Ready for this? I call it the super slammer. Dunk your grandma. Skip to my loo. Do the legs behind the back. Chocolate thunder attack. Gorilla. Head turn it. Spike chilling. What you feeling? Ah! Horizontal monumental turbo power magical rim rack. Yeah, This is an easy call. Nothing's proven to beat the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than boom, tough act and tenac. It's the only one clinically proven to prevent athlete's foot. Rolling stands, tenac is still the toughest. Good call. Boom, tough act and tenac. Inside every can of Minwax is the secret to enhancing wood's natural beauty. Minwax rich wood stains and long-lasting protective finishes make it easy to turn any house into a beautiful home. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. I have to focus, gather everything I've learned, all my successes, all my sacrifices, all my pain, and concentrate that energy into one moment. Ah! That's a moment I'll use every single day of my life. <gasps> there are 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. Millions of children have hope because of Children's Miracle Network and you. Children's Miracle Network is the alliance of premier children's hospitals dedicated to serving all children. Together, we're making miracles happen. Show your support. Join Marie Osmond, John Schneider, Mary Lou Retton, Steve Young, and Dan Patrick for the Children's Miracle Network celebration coming the last weekend in May.
back at M&T Bank Stadium. Leif Elsmo, Quinn Kessnick, 6-4 to four of the score. Virginia leads. And on the sideline with Dave Petramala is our Joe Beninati. It's very much. Dave, I know that uh, on your team, nobody cares who gets the credit for a great play. But in the second half, which side of the ball has to make more great plays? Actually, both sides need to step up, and it needs to start at the face off X. You know, you look at the stats, and uh, I think they've got 13 shots on goal. We got 11. They got seven saves. We got seven. So both goalies are playing well. I think we have all the four face offs uh, compared to maybe their 12 or, or their eight. I'm not sure about the exact number. And they're out ground balling us 26 to 16. Those are the, that's the difference in this game. We just had to settle down. You know, we had difficulty defending them in our man, so we went zone, and we had a lot of success with that. We'll go back to that in the second half a little bit, but we need to score some goals, get a, get a, get a little bit of a lead, and then maybe we can sit back in that zone. But we got to go back to the little things. It starts with the face effects with ground balls. We know your team has a way of clawing its way back into games. Best of luck in that second half. Thank you. That's Dave Petromala. Leaf, back to you. Thank you, Joe. I tell you what, Dave Petromala knows the numbers. Let's take a look at a scoring summary from the first half. A.J. Shannon with the hat trick, and then Chris Rotelli involved with half of Virginia's goal, two, assi uh, two assists and one goal. For Hopkins, the seniors, Doniger and Benson. Harned, though, has been playing a superb game between the lines in terms of ground balls, making energetic plays, and really getting this hometown crowd behind the Blue Jays. There's A.J. Shannon. Such a threat from the outside. He got the second goal, the third goal for Virginia, and then also the fifth goal. He has been sensational. Well, he came out, and his shooting percentage, his accuracy on the run, and the different shots, right-handed down low, left-handed up high, inside, out front. The double-clutch fist pump celebration. A.J. Shannon with Beyond Ontario, the Canadian product. College Lacrosse has a long history of Canadian players coming out and being tremendous goal scorers. Devillier against Harrison. This is the war that Petromala wants to win, and he gets the first faceoff of the second half. Harrison changed up his moves. He'd been trying to push the ball forward in the first half. That time he clamped and raked it back to himself. Usually not his strong move. First goal is always important as you switch halves. Teams have a chance to cool down, collect themselves. And it'll be Hopkins putting pressure on Johnson. Second half scoring, outscoring opponents 29 to four. Hopkins is a behemoth in the second half. Flag down on the far side. It's gonna be Trey Whitty, I believe. Pushing foul. Hopkins not afraid to take Trey Whitty the long pole to the cage. Now, Whitty is known as a guy who's a great ball handler, but here he just gets on the back of Kyle Harrison and rides him into the crease. Push with possession. That should be a 30-second foul. Again, Harrison, look at the footing. Just no chance for Harrison to plant there and make a move. It's a tough call. Of, uh, you know, you're thinking about the loose footing. He's on his shoulder. He falls down. He goes to his back. I think the key for Witte there is not to let Harrison get, gain that inside leverage. Once he gets inside of you, it's really helpless. The first test goalie-wise will be against Tilma Johnson. Hopkins, one goal on two attempts on EMO. at six against five as Hopkins tries to make it a one-goal game. Down it goes! And just goes high. Possession shot either hits inside the pipe or they keep the ball in the same. Doniger kind of rotating to the high slot. Lassore looks to get inside again, this time to Kyle Berry in another dramatic save by Johnson. Connor Ford gets the ground ball. Ground ball's face-offs. That's what Petromala wants. That's what he's got. Benson! And another save by Thomas Johnson! Two spectacular saves. The first with his stick, denying the corner shot. And then it was Benson from point-blank range. Nine saves for Tillman Johnson. If it wasn't for Johnson, Hopkins would have a lead at this point. I can assure you his play has continued at the same level that he exhibited in the semifinal. Those saves are half reaction, they're half anticipation. You gotta trust your intuition. When Benson turns, the ball's coming at you in an eye flash. Wayne Kesnick, goalie for the last time Hopkins won the championship in 87. This is Rotelli working on bowling behind. Now he gives it up for the long pole. They come back and switch up. Far side, not much angle. Lanning put it right into the body of Cher. He had nothing to shoot at. The zone defense forcing that shot from the wing. Not much angle. Cher now very patient with their clearing opportunity. McDermott, the ball bounces into the soggy turf. But McDermott quick enough to go back and get the possession. 
Virginia leading by a razor thin margin of 9-8. The dramatic saves have been between the Virginia Pikes. Hopkins shooting very, very close on him. Neither team's wasting many shots right now. You don't see either team taking, you know, a shot outside of 12 yards. One, because of the field condition, and two, because of the quality of both these goalies. Dave Petromala got what he wanted. He got a good face-off work from Harrison to start the second half. He got good ground ball work. That's what he called for. Now he wants the ball in the net. Bowling up top to McDermott. Virginia very careful not to extend in this loose turf. Peter Lasor against Brett Hughes, the top defensive player. The ball down, there's that turf causing problems. Hughes is the most athletic. The ball in the air, problems up front. Push call against Hopkins. Opportunity lost for the Blue Jays. Brett Hughes, guy who's a terrific high school football player. Now, he went to Upper Arlington in Ohio. That's the same school that produced Mark Kuntz. The Virginia coaching staff went out to watch Mark Kuntz play in a football game when he was, when he was a senior. And they walked away saying, hey, who, who's that sophomore linebacker? Well, his name was Brett Hughes. This is a not is. easy clearing situation, Quint. This is some problems caused by Hopkins as Virginia cannot get the ball across the line. Tillman Johnson, they're almost giving him a lane to run up to the midfield. Finally, Rotelli comes and helps out the long poles. Patience on that clear. Their alignment was nice. They spread the field. Much like soccer, you want to use the entire width of the field. And we've seen them hurry earlier in the game and lose some of those battles. You could see some, something went on at halftime there where Coach Sarger backed off and said, hey, guys, we got to clear with a little better efficiency, a little more organized, it seemed. Yavoli will start behind. Number 42, and Johnny Christmas, his teammate last year with Connor Gill. Connor Gill graduates. Matt Ward comes aboard. In close to Matt Ward, tied up by McDermott. Fight on the sideline. A.J. Shannon gets in position. Shannon. Kaiser pushing it out. Johnny Christmas now comes in to Garvey. He can't get it. Here comes Hopkins with Chris Watson coming up with a loose ball. Nice job by the Blue Jays. And again, win the bound, the ground ball war. The little play, one ground ball goes a long way. That initial pass by Virginia would have gone out of bounds on any other day of the year, on any other surface. But because of the moisture, the ball stays in bounds, and then that creates some helter-skelter lacrosse. Kyle Harrison with Trey Whitty on him. As they set up yet another offensive flirt. Played about five minutes in this third quarter. No goals, either team. Trey Whitty setting up for the speed of Harrison. He'll give him the alley down the right. Take the right hand with not much angle. He wants to roll back into the center. Whitty, not guilty of a push on that. Whitty sitting down in a chair, much like a linebacker or a defender in basketball. You want to get as low as you can. Bend your knees. Here is Lasore. Working tough on the short stick in close, but the back of the net. Nearside fans saw the net jump and react. And here comes Ned Bowen. Captain, defensive end to Christmas. On the sideline, watch out. A little bit of pressure. Pizer checking, checking behind. Really working him over as Christmas now settles back to Yavoli. Christmas, the road runner in space. He had the ball about 40 yards away from the rack. And that's where he can kick it in the third gear and just run right by it. Kyle Dixon, the freshman, the first midfield back on A.J. Shannon, the hero so far. And Rotelli, the seniors, bookending the six foot four freshman Kyle Dixon from Spalding in Maryland. Tough matchup defensively as you look at Benson Irwin went on the top score, Shannon. Cavaliers, first 16 minutes, almost 17 minutes, five goals. In the last 18, since they went to that zone, they've calmed down. It's worked. Only the Matt Ward goal to stop the four-goal run of Hopkins. Virginia misses Connor Gill, last year's senior, all-star, attackman, one of the best passers at the game has seen in recent history. Against the zone, he would be terrific behind the cage, picking apart this defense. Benson Irwin now. Uh, this is Corey Hardy. Working down low on A.J. Shannon. 
man-to-man -man -man defense right now by Hopkins. That word initiates from the wing, looking for slide packages. Up top, Shannon likes that one, but it bounces off of Kaiser. And the ball goes out of bounds. Joe Beninati, your sense from the sideline. Guys, I just love watching Benson Irwin play defense. The guy's a battler. He's a brawler, literally, too. During the offseason, he takes boxing lessons. Right now, he's trying to beat Virginia to the punch. Back upstairs to you. Both teams slugging it out in messy conditions. No rain. This is the best weather we've seen, believe it or not, in the last eight days here in the Maryland area. Joe Yaboli working behind. Still, two goals separate these teams, six to four. It's been a careful third quarter. Hopkins in the zone. Virginia resetting their offense, getting their spacing and their alignment. They're in no rush. Dixon way up top, and now this is Matt Polske. Fresh legs in there on this set. Shannon. So they've got Rotelli off, resting with Rotelli and Glad uh, Gladding right now, both on the bench, catching their breath. Yavoli slipping a little bit behind. Kaiser comes out on Christmas, says Dixon works it over to the sideline. Dixon. Very patient as Matt Ward takes his time against Chris Watson. Warning for stalling. They'll have to take it to the net. There's a shot. Matt Ward wastes no time putting a right-handed shot from the left-handed side. Easily taken by Cher. Well, when the referees issue the stalling warning, that doesn't mean that you have to attack. And I think that was a freshman shot by Matt Ward. Watch up, shot close to the middle. McDermott right inside, and continually we see defensemen block it down. This is transition for Virginia. They've got numbers. Inside, Dixon, he'll have a shot if he wants it. Down low to Christmas, and a great save by Rob Cher. He's matching Tim and Johnson's save for save, the tenth of the day for him. Counterattack by Hopkins. They have an extra man on. But now Virginia with their substitution. That was an opportunity. You won't get a better chance than that for Christmas and Cher. Taking a page out of the Tillman Johnson book. Stepping up a level here on Championship Monday. Kevin Bolden now gives it off to his men as they get fresh legs in. Heiser pushing in, the younger brother. Wheeling for the right-handed shot, and the ball finds the net. The fresh turf on the crease gave that one a little bit of a bounce. Hits the corner. First goal of the second half makes it a one-goal game. Greg Pizer starts it, but it was the senior, Rob Scher, the one-on-one -on -one stuff save. Quick hands, controls his rebound. The crowd gets fired up. And then at the other end, it's Greg Pizer, the middle of the Pizer trio. The youngest brother is still in high school. The oldest brother starts on the defensive end. Little inside roll action, maintains his footing, and does a bounce shot. And look at that ball just trickle up into the corner. Tillman Johnson can't believe it. Maybe the slowest shot we've seen all season. Fast break off the faceoff. De Villiers, but it's not enough. And they'll settle things down, change personnel. Joe? What do you got? Guys, goaltending is so important in a playoff series, so important at the championship level. Wasn't it interesting just moments ago to see Rob Scher take a page out of Tillman Johnson's book, made the huge save, gave it the fist pump, and it was echoed over here on the sideline. Thank you, Joe. And Quint, the thing that occurs to me is the fresh grass put on the under the feet of Tillman Johnson, put in last night, gave that ball in a bounce. Nowhere else in the field are you going to get that much of a bounce except right there. I think that Johnson was not guarding against that against that bounce shot. Remember, the field is so soft that most players won't bounce. Tillman Johnson loves to play in the mud. Back from his days playing at St. Mary's in Annapolis, a high school field that they call the pit, and he feels comfortable playing in the mud. Yep, he was a legend at St. Mary's in the Annapolis area, started Indian Creek School, went to St. Mary's, never stopped at the JV level, went right to varsity, and played on the county field, on the recreation field. Was only a one-year starter at the high school level. Chris Garrity, who plays at Penn State, started in front of him. St. Mary's historically has had terrific, terrific, terrific goaltenders. 
in, in control of this game really since early part of the second quarter when they went to the zone defense. Went, they took Virginia out of their rhythm, out of the good matchups. Look at Virginia pressing right now. Extending the matchups. Part of the frustration of the zone philosophy. Slow the thing down. A running gun team, a thoroughbred team. They want to run. You deny them the run, and they get frustrated. Okay, one strategy that's worked for Virginia's defense is Ned Bowen, number 18, is marked up against Ford or Brent Hughes against the Bronco, Connor Ford. Taking him out of the game plan entirely. Lasor against Gladding. Gladding falls down. Lasor in close, and the ball goes just wide of the net. Tillman Johnson goes back and picks it up and just fires it downfield to get away from the ride. Watch out! Christmas picks it up, can't get it cleanly. There's a scrum in the mud. The ball hit over the shoulder, just wide of the net. The field dictating the reality of what's going on. Delayed calls, and they again, last two times, trying to skip people. Virginia has missed the pass, but they'll have another shot at an EMO. You've got some guys who are absolutely selling out on every possession. Tillman Johnson makes the, the very smart pass downfield. And then you watch the defensive play. This is Lasore trying to turn the corner, and the ball goes behind the cage. Good interior defense by Virginia. Bowen, Berman, and Hughes. Now Johnson, that's a smart play right there. He's gonna turn it over in his own zone. So he sends it down. Watch the diving defense right there to make the play. And then it's a free-for-all, a quagmire in the scrum. Body's flying, Sham makes the save on his heels. And then this is the foul. It's Garvey with a holding violation. Look at his stick. Ouch, ouch. I tell you what, Rob Scher has played just as well as Johnson since that first quarter, since the zone. First extra man of the game for Virginia. Rotelli, the primary passer from the right side. Shannon extends his arms and lets it fly. He has had a comfort zone all game. Three of the six goals by Shannon. And that is not the guy that this man wants shooting. You've got to stretch your defense. Check up on number eight. Chris Bist to Dixon, the first midfield in there of Rotelli, and that's A.J. Shannon. Inside is Ward, working the interior of that. Uh-oh, Chris Bist this time, he buries no share. Second chance in the face of share, and Johnny Christmas gets goal number seven. Christmas from Rotelli, the seam pass. Skills by Rotelli. He's the quarterback of this unit. We'll look at him up top. He eyes the alley and a little look away action right there. Freezes Kevin Connery, the Hopkins defender down low. Gives Christmas enough time to catch and redirect towards that inside post. Great pass by Rotelli. Johnny Christmas becoming a factor in this game as we go back to the faceoff X. Withholding violation against Virginia. So the ball is stuck in the mud. Devilliers perched over the ball, keeping it from play. That time it was Harrison in there, as you look at Johnny Christmas. He has been uh, playing a marquee a more, player. Playing with a little more aggressive attitude right now. I thought on Saturday he kind of let the game come to him. Today he's exerting himself a little more on those free-for-all situations. He's got a goal and assist, but the game never came to him Saturday. That was the problem, right? He, really not much of a factor. And I think in this game, obviously, his coach wants him to step up. Kevin Baldwin. This little guy can do it all. Great vision, great sense of when to pass and when not to pass, but this time the ball checked out of a stick. Culver, the freshman. Michael Culver from New Jersey, one of the highest recruited freshman defenders in the nation. Matched up against Bowen. So Nathan Kenny will clear the ball down right there, number 44 with a short stick. One of the top short stick defenders on the Virginia roster, Rotelli on the field as he Usually is Rotelli and Gladding, 25 and 12 on the field almost the whole day. They're both out there right now. Talk about fitness. Playing this game on one day's rest. Logging miles in the mud. Defense, offense, clearing the ball. Rotelli on extra man. Gladding plays man down. And Gladding is head to toe covered in dirt. He is a scrapper. AJ Shen looking to initiate from the corner. Can you cover him? Matt Field gets the chance to see if he can do it, and then they switch off the long stick, going to the far pipe. As soon as the slide comes, you look to see the rotation. Virginia has to recognize, don't they, Quinn? That was good Virginia offense, so they saw the double team, and Shannon becomes a passer in that situation. 
It's usually going to take more than the one home run pass, though, to score. You want to kick it to the wing and then spin it, multiple passing for the layup. You hear the defensive calls as Benson Irwin locks up on your bowling. They went back to the zone. Green zone. So they changed up when they saw the matchup of Irwin on your bowling. Petromalo's got the flash cards on the sideline. AJ Shannon takes the ball behind to Yavoli. Very patient. Virginia has a long time now since the end of the first quarter to look at the zone, but they've never really gotten comfortable against the zone. They didn't at Homewood when Hopkins shut them out in the first half, and they haven't yet here. Rotelli. Rotelli with that overhand motion of both his passing and his shooting. And his head's always up. He's become such a dangerous passer from up top. Warned to keep it in the box. Just follow your eyes around the interior line of that box, and that's where you keep it 20 yards square. You've got to keep the pressure on. Clock now. It's 20 seconds. They want the last shot. They know Hopkins has the potential to take it down and get one off quickly. They would just as soon keep the two-goal lead as give it up with time enough for them to score. 10 seconds. Rotelli looked up at the clock. Here comes a shot from Shannon, and he's got it! from Shannon with five seconds to go in the period. Rotelli will get the assist. Again, another goal late in the quarter. Remember, Hopkins, uh, Virginia scored earlier in the first quarter with four seconds to go, and this time Shannon just gets a good look at the cage, sets his feet, a worm burner. The ball skims on this wet surface. Shannon is feeling it. Say defensively for Hopkins, another mental breakdown. Who's the guy that can beat you from the outside? AJ Shannon. Right, step out and play him. You know that Petromala, just moments before that, Quint, was looking at his defense and saying, don't give eight the shot. Shannon, four goals. Rotelli unofficially with four assists. So that combination, Shannon and Rotelli involved with most of Virginia's score. Hopkins comes out strong under Dave Petromala's orders with Greg Pizer scoring first, but then it was Christmas on the EMO. Shannon with the late lead for Virginia to the fourth quarter. We'll be back for the final 15 minutes of this year's championship. I swim the 200. I study sociology. I grind out laps. I cram for tests. I race nationals. I take finals. And when I finish, I'll be ready to start. There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes. And thanks to continued support, Coca-Cola helps them pursue their dreams. who don't fly to Milan for a haircut, there's Fantastic Sam's, where fashion sense meets common sense. If your premium television service is just movies, you're missing out. Showtime has the biggest hit movies, and you get hot new original series. Eric Stoltz, Felicity Huffman, and an all-star cast star in the series premiere of Out of Order, Sunday, June 1st at 10, 9 central. In other premium networks can't get. Original series they don't have. Why limit yourself? Order Showtime now, and new subscribers can get $50 cash back. Call 1-888-SHOWTIME. M&T Bank Stadium, the dramatic venue for the championship weekend. Dom Starja knows that even though they're the best two teams, there's no right to win. It comes down to simply a matter of that there's no deserve at this time of year. There's only due. 
is only make a play when a game is being decided. It's as simple as that. And uh, you know, you may you may be a great person, you may not. Uh, but the person that picks up that ground ball and makes that shot ultimately is going to decide this in the end. And uh, you do all the things right to get you in a position so that you're in a position to make that play. Uh, but in the end, somebody's got to make the play, and, and that, that that's how it turns out. Joe Beninati, uh, Dom Starja has hit the nail on the head on this one. Yeah, he has, and let's continue his thought. He just told his guys, don't stop playing. Defender Brett Hughes may have said it best. Let's play this fourth quarter like we're down by three. On the other side, Dave Petromala instructing his Blue Jays, if you want it, you can have it. You've got to come back in the fourth. All right, good words from two of the best coaches with the two best teams in Division One, and what a great start to the fourth quarter. De Villiers won a semi-fast break because he couldn't get rid of Harrison, and then it was Harned Quint that took the ball right out of the air. Harned and Witty, both long stick players for either team, just playmakers, guys who bail you out time and time again. That was Harned trailing the play. You get down to the fourth quarter, and Quint, you've been here in 1987. It comes down to big-time goalie play in this fourth quarter. They're going to see some rubber. They've got to make the saves. Fourth quarter for Hopkins. Outscore their opponents 19 to 1. This team can come back, and Virginia is aware of that. Up top, big shot by the Bronco Ford. Came from Barry. Kyle Barry from behind gives it out to him, but a stick caught it in the middle. Tough on both ends of the field to get those shots through the defense before it hits the goalie. David Berman, the big senior, makes another play. Berman, 6-4 with that long stick up in the air, making his 52nd career start. Transition, classic fast break. Matt Ward's there, and the check from behind takes it out of Hughes' stick. Johnny Christmas can't get it. The ball rolls out. Let's see what they make of the call. They give it to Hopkins. What a great trailing play by Hopkins when Virginia looked like they were going to get a serious shot on Cher. Coast to coast burst by Brent Hughes. He's an opposing athlete talking to him yesterday. Coach Starge brought him around to all the interview sessions. Kind of a media training for the future. He thinks he's a stud defender, maybe the, one of the best in the nation next year. Kevin Bowen, who has initiated many of the big moments for this team of Hopkins, the smallest, but maybe the toughest. The push call, he draws the push from Gladding. Gladding's hopping up and down, cannot believe it. There's a second flag. Gladding is a member of this man down defense. So now Virginia needs to bring in a sub for Gladding, who's usually one of the five. It's going to be either a hold or a push. I like that defense. I think we've, I think, I think we've seen that not be whistled many weeks this season and probably all game. We so see, I, I, we see I understand pushes. what Gladding's talking about right there. He was in front. Uh, I didn't see anything. Equal pressures allowed. He was being threatened. We see guys chuck guys all day long and don't get called. Here's a time where he was being threatened. He pushes him back with equal pressure and gets nailed for it. Doesn't matter. He's in the box six on five. It'll be Hopkins' chance to make it a two-goal game. Kyle Barry. Ford on the near side, Doniger far side, one out of three on the extra man. Up top to Barry, and look at the save by Tillman Johnson. He puts it right back into Barry's stick. He might eat this one, and he takes another save, a third save. Tillman Johnson has entered the surreal world that nobody else has ever gotten to. Unbelievable. Teams back to even strength. And the defense checks that one. Stays in bounds. Herman is showing an awful lot of courage. Johnson's 12th save. It was a flurry of three in a row. Boland, Benson, and the outside crank shot that started it all from Kyle Barry. If they can get out of this EMO, it would be an amazing moment. Teams at even strength right now. They've gotten through the tough part. Holy smokes, Tillman Johnson has given his team moments more with that three-goal lead single-handedly. Hopkins now subbing on the fly, exchanging Boland and Ford for McDermott and Harrison. Rotelli's been out this whole time. Mark that last flurry. A game-changing moment in the goal between the pipes. It's in the crease. Hopkins just lost. Lasore just lost his footing point and fell into the crease. Referee saw he was laying there in the mud. He got caught in the mud. Here's a free clear for Virginia. Watch out. So you don't want to clear box. Substitute.
substitution side, and that's what happens when you clear near that substitution box. Things change awful quickly. That's another mental mistake. Petromala on the sideline, working the officials, much like college basketball. Tillman Johnson standing on his head. The first save, Barry, boom, he's there with the stick. Bolin came in on the one-on-one. -on -one. That one is the one I like the best. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He, he would have gotten an assist in the worst-case scenario. He assisted Barry, gave him the greatest shot of them all. Tremendous job as they try to clear the ball. Great pressure by Virginia. Ball still on the turf. And it's brought up finally by Hopkins. Still pressure. Watson yellow, yellow. putting himself in a pretty precarious position right there. Ball on the ground. Christmas stepping up to play him. Not only did he scoop up the ball, but he took a chunk of dirt with it. Greg Pizer now will hold the ball on the far side. Pizer, he's got a goal already. Very confident young player. Has the right hand. Look to the crease continually to Bobby Benson. Benson being defended by a short stick, Nathan Kenny. Short stick on the six foot four Benson. They want to get the ball to him. Barry. And another control offensive set. Bowling excellent at starting this, this time with Trey Whitty on him. Whitty slips a little bit. Trey Whitty slips. The slide comes over. And Bowling still with the ball in his stick. Into McDermott. And a piece of it. He hit by the Jackson. McDermott hit the far post, and after the shot, he was elbowed up high by Ned Bowen. It'll be a penalty against Virginia, though. We could hear this. Listen. Ball to the front. Listen to McDermott's shot. Left front, D balls left front. Slip. Ball to the front. Don't call that. Left front. Boom. You can, and you can hear that man right there, Tillman Johnson, saying, don't call that. He's I don't asking like the official to show some restraint in the first. Another extra man for Hopkins, Quint. I don't like the odds of Tillman Johnson having to stop Hopkins again. One out of four on extra man. This is the most lethal EMO in the country, and it's been Tillman Johnson single-handedly sending him the other way. One of our cues to victory, the extra man, Hopkins, at about 50% on the season. Ford into Benson, but he's tied up as the ball rolls out. One Virginia play. And the ball checked right out of the stick. Home call on an off-ball player. Rotelli, I guess, tied up. Watson. Ball put right back into play. The crowd doesn't like that call. It wasn't on the ball, and that's why they don't really appreciate the call. Rotelli was wrapping up Watson, pulling him away so his teammate could get the ball. Rotelli at the midfield strike. He'll come in when teams are even strength. Barry's passing up a pretty good shot right there. Center, center top from about 15 yards. Doniger, left hand, and it's taken right off the face mask of David Berman. Third shot that Berman has blocked in this quarter alone. That reminds me of the Virginia defense back in 1999 with Ryan Curtis. Rotelli coming in, but they'll get a shot before he gets there. Barry can't get it to Tillman Johnson, and Virginia has dodged another bullet. Here comes Rotelli. They've got some numbers here on fast break if they want it. Things have been kind of helter-skelter, so they'll settle it down. The Good senior Rotelli knows that they've been playing a lot of defense. He's logged a lot of miles. Close X, close X. They'll try to reset here. Look at this Virginia defense just battling toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hopkins. Seven minutes in a row now. Hopkins hasn't been able to score in that quarter. Multiple penalties killed off. Hughes, Berman, Bowen. And Tillman Johnson. Quint, we're looking at Rotelli, and you pointed out uh, during the break that he has assisted on the last four goals, a huge factor in the scoring, even though he hasn't put the ball in the net. One goal, four assists. Scored the first goal of the game. And I've been really impressed with his game management. And that was a lot of possession time for Hopkins. I wouldn't be surprised as you see Doniger on Rotelli for them to take a little bit of time with this possession, Quint. Fourth quarter now, they've got the lead. They're being warned. They have to keep it in the box. You don't have to shoot. You just can't go outside of those white lines, the 20 by 20 box that surrounds that crease. The referees will give you about 45 seconds. A.J. Shannon, the feared one, the guy who's really taken over the game. He scored the last goal. He's got four on the day. Moving pick called on Yavoli, I guess, near side, and they're going to give the ball to Johns Hopkins. All the little calls now. 
going towards Johns Hopkins. Opening the window, opening the door for a comeback. No goals in this fourth quarter. We're halfway through. Goniger to McDermott. They'll change one more player as Benson Irwin goes off and Kyle Harrison comes on. Get Virginia withstand the best offense in the country for seven more minutes. It's been a non-stop barrage of pressure for Tillman Johnson in the defense, and they've stood up to it. The turf dictating some of, look at Rotel, it's a move. Just stepping out, challenging McDermott. Rotelli being aggressive on his checks. McDermott trying to get far side. Doniger, and another ball absorbed into the headgear of a defenseman. This time, Dave Berman again makes a save with his helmet. Berman has been sensational with as many saves as Johnson has. Hopkins gets the loose ball. I think Dave Petromala has to be proud of that effort. They've done everything except beat the defense and goalie. Right now, not only is it Tillman Johnson, but it's Dave Berman with four block shots in this quarter. He's a big target out there, six foot four. Big defense overall. As you see Kyle Harrison pushing, hook at the shot, and it's just this time it's Tillman Johnson who's fresh because of all the saves, and the ball goes to Virginia. Johnson off the face mask. Harrison with the jump shot. He elevates, rotates, and fires and pegs Tillman Johnson in the face. And then Ned Bowen hustling the ball out to the end line. He was the closest as he dove across the end line. Wait, when you look at the defense for Virginia, underrated for sure. And look at the size. Tillman Johnson, 6'1", then Bowen, 6'2", Hughes, 6'3", and Berman, 6'4". They are huge, they've worked together, and they are very efficient. 148 career starts between that trio. It's a unit that's gotten better over the last two years, and they have the answer for Hopkins' offense. If you look back in this series, Hopkins has only managed to score eight goals in the last three years in any one contest. They put up 22 goals in the last three matchups with Virginia. Ball stuck in the mud on the end line. Hopkins originally had the ball in their stick. They have 10 seconds to get it out of the defensive zone. And they got away with one there because initially that was a bad throw by Rotelli going behind the goal. They keep it down here and they really just want to work that clock, that three goal lead. No scores in the fourth quarter. We talked about the dominance of Hopkins in the fourth quarter. Something not lost on Dom Starge and his team. They know they would withstand a barrage and quit. They got the barrage of shots. They just absorbed it beautifully. They can't play zone defense right now. Got to step out and try to create some turnovers here with their defense. A.J. Shannon, knowing the history of the great Hopkins team this year, I think Virginia will go ahead and be aggressive. Both teams with two timeouts. This is the tough, top defensive midfielder, Benson Irwin. A.J. Shannon behind the goal. Up into the middle, and the redirect, easy save by Rob Schick. Nice pass by Shannon. The shooter didn't get much behind the shot, and that wasn't easy. Say that ball was going so slow, it almost became a, became a changeup. We're under five minutes. Plenty of time for Hopkins to put pressure on with a three-goal flurry. Ball goes behind Tillman Johnson as they missed the connection. Virginia can't get it cleanly. And it goes back to Peter Lasore. Oh, Lasore hustling, digging that ball out. He really manufactured this whole possession. That was some gutty play on the end line. The source staying low, getting good traction. Good traction is something nobody's enjoying, except when the source gets that low grabby set. They change to their first midfield again. Kyle Harrison slipping, sliding, trying to find a slide. It's something he likes. Wide shot, Tim Jones just can't get his traction to chase the ball behind. How Barry does. Barry to Bowling. Bowling has initiated so effectively for his team today to try to draw a penalty or get an opportunity against Chris Rotelli. Rotelli needs to do it all. Bowling looks up top continuously. The roll back right, left. Pressure nice double team. Hughes. Rotelli gives it up to Nathan Kenny. Numbers for Virginia. Let's see if they go to who. Matt Ward calls Virginia Ward. wants a timeout on the far side, and they get it. So it was Hughes and Rotelli double-teaming Boland. Rotelli stood him up. He was hammering him with a good cross-check. Boland turned his back, and then 
Brett Hughes snuck up and made the turnover. A great story of phenomenal team defense. Virginia just 338 away from a championship. Championships brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real and singular. The wireless company that fits you best. We're back at M&T Bank Stadium. A record crowd, 37,000 pre-sold for this event. Championship weekend at what is the Raven Stadium, M&T Bank Stadium. Don't forget, a great day of action on ESPN. Later today, still hoping to bring you Major League Baseball as the Boston Red Sox visit the New York Yankees as they wait out a rain delay, hoping that Roger Clemens gets a shot at his 300th win and that storied rivalry goes head to head again. Joe Beninati on the sideline. Joe, it has been an unbelievable defensive day as a team for Virginia. It has been a very, very difficult defensive game. Here's what Virginia's saying. No more skip passes. Keep it out of the middle. They are trying desperately to avoid turnovers. On the Johns Hopkins side, they are going to try to dodge from the corners. Don't try the middle. Work from the alley dodge. And, of course, footing dictating a lot of that, Quinn Kessidick. Question here for Johns Hopkins is you've got to stretch to the perimeter. Time is on Virginia's side. They'll start this possession with A.J. Shannon. They have all their talented ball handlers in the game. Eventually, Rob Shearer might have to leave that crease and become a double-teaming defenseman. A three-goal cushion now with 3.35 to go. They'll start with the ball in the stick. Shearer is out already. Hopkins will send the double-team. Very aggressive tactics now, Hopkins. A.J. Shannon going against the double team, looking for help. Puts it on the ground, and Johnny Christmas gets there first. Slips between two defenders, and they just fight to kill some clock. Great job by Hopkins. They get the ball back in their sticks. Got it back quickly. That possession lasted 20 seconds. And here comes Benson Irwin. They got to pick him up, Rotelli does. Now they got the defensive guys in there. Let's see if they take time to reset. They do. They just will take a little clock as Doniger and company get back in the game. Bowen Bowen, Bowen hanging tough with Barry. Barry comes in, and he makes it a two-ball game. Kyle Barry unassisted, and I think this caught the Virginia defense off guard because Hopkins was on a substitution. They only had four guys on the field. A little mo diving across. Beats him to the far side. Barry leaning in, using that body. You talk about the importance of faceoffs right now. This is monumental. Biggest faceoff of the day. Devilliers, Harrison, fighting in the dirt. Pushed out by Devilliers. Trey Whitty, watch out. Berman trying to clear. Let's see if they get a timeout. He goes into the middle. The check from behind puts it down on the turf. Here comes Hopkins. Check by Nathan Kenny. Virginia's got one more timeout here. Kenny puts it back to Matt Ward, the young guy. Not only did Nathan Kenny make the check, but he scooped up the loose ball. If he was not in that position, Hopkins had a transition play. Nathan Kenny, the hero of the last five minutes, as Hopkins desperate to make a comeback with her tremendous offense. Matt Ward out of the net. Ball tough to pick up on the turf that's so dug in after seven days of rain. Gladding. Don't need a shot here. Don't need a shot here. Christmas takes it anyway, and he'll seal the championship with a tremendous goal. A risky shot by Christmas because if this ball is saved, Hopkins has a chance to cut the margin to one, but he made the shot, and that's all that counts. Christmas from a severe angle over the shoulder of Rob Scher. John Christmas has got two. Listen to this crowd erupt. I like the philosophy cue of being aggressive. 
Here he is. He takes the hit from Harned, and he beats Cher to the punch. Straight overhand over the stick. And the emotion of John Christmas. He's got two goals. Virginia Stahl offense, so effective right there. But that entire play was made by Nathan Kenny delivering the hit against Watson. And the philosophy of being aggressive, taking the shot if you have it, because Dom and Virginia has seen Hopkins come back and beat teams if you let them. They stayed aggressive in the offensive end if it presented itself. The tough decision for a coach in that scenario is, do I use my timeout? Things were getting a little out of control, but he trusted his players. He trusted his seniors. And this is just a possession foul off that last goal. Maybe, actually, no, it's not. It's a time-serving violation against Virginia on that last goal. Hopkins has an extra man. Plenty of time left. That goal may be huge because with two minutes left and an extra man, they're going to put some rubber on Tillman Johnson right here. Joe Beninati. EMO right now. Kyle Berry up top. Doniger and then Ford on the near side right there. Three big time shooters, especially that one. seven on the EMO goal. My point about the earlier Christmas shot is the ball is more important than a goal in that case. And that goal now, we go back to a face-off with a two-goal margin. I think having the ball in your own zone is more important. Keep your eye on Doniger, top right. He'll position himself. Hold it right here. You see this creation of separation that he has made for himself, and then he lets it rip. Boom. Just inside the post. This is Johnson reacting, and it's all about velocity right there. That ball's moving 95 miles an hour. You have less than one-tenth of a second to make that move. Can you imagine a baseball pitcher running halfway into home plate and firing the ball? Still have a man-up opportunity. No even strength on the shot. Kyle Harrison fighting. Oh, Cole on the wing, getting possession. Trey Winnie, let's see if they call a timeout. Trey Winnie inside. Virginia Witte with the biggest ground ball of the season. The initial foul we're just learning was against John Christmas after he scored Virginia's ninth goal. But you talk about the importance of faceoffs. There's Christmas. He's in the box. Virginia's still a man down. It was an unreleasable foul. We'll take a short break. Come back for the last minute and a half. Hopkins still fighting for a chance to win the championship. Steel down the middle. What a one. Did you see what I see? If I saw a robber. I saw it. Does anybody want to coat? Yeah, we had up, man. Hey, you crazy, man? That's Corinthian leather. And use the footstool to get to the refrigerator. I'm running all over y'all like a treadmill. Oh, ball oh. hole. Oh. Stop it. It's bad. I'm telling you, I'm just super nice in it, you know? That's all. When you nice like <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's that's all. Like you've seen the movie. You're gonna keep lightning, and you're gonna spit nails. But you've never seen Rocky like this. Part of Real Classics, the movie, and the behind-the-scenes look. The rare home movies of the making of Rocky. 8 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. Coca-Cola brings you championship expressions. Coca-Cola brings you championship expressions. Coca-Cola, real. Back at M&T Bank Stadium, Lee Felsbo, Quinn Kesnick, Joe Beninati on the sideline, and this has been sensational. The number one team against the number two team. Virginia has led throughout, but has been tested since the first quarter by Hopkins. Look at Dom Starja, who just got a timeout. A minute and a half left in this game, but next up, we are going to take you to a historic matchup as Roger Clemens hopes to get a shot at his 300th win against the Boston Red Sox in New York. That will be coming up. Weather permitting, we will definitely join that, and it will be right here on ESPN. Stay with us. A minute and a half left here. Time enough. Corey Harned, empty net, will be on the ball. Corey Harned with a check. It puts it right on the turf. Harned could be the MVP still as he goes flying through two people. The ball hits the ground. Witte with another ground ball, and he's fouled. Trey Witte with two crucial plays here in the last two minutes. This should be a push from behind against Johns Hopkins. Harned really let the 
emotions get the best of him, carrying that ball up the sideline. He had help on the far side, and you see the emotion of Dave Petromala. Vicious hit. It was Heiser. He Watch did this. everything he wanted. He strips first, and then. Well, this is the part of the play that's probably not the smartest right here. The ball comes flying out of his stick. It was Matt Ward and Harnett, and now watch Pizer, Mike, Michael Pizer, just run Witty from behind, and Trey Witty comes up with a classic ground ball. So now they can't double as easily. You've got six on five. Not yet. They double. Not it's yet. An even Virginia matchup. still a man down. Two goal lead. Nine to seven. Rob Sherrill a mistake. Rob Sherrill will vacate the crease, and there he goes. Empty net. They now the now Virginia's down. foul is released. Now yeah, Virginia man. should spread and play keep away. They got to move the ball quickly. The pressure will come to the ball. If they skip people and move the ball quickly, that's their hope of keeping it at this end. Under a minute, you see the clock winding down. Empty net. They'll hold it out, though. Holding possession. Fighting the urge to shoot at the net. Share now back in. The crowd starting to swell with anticipation of Virginia winning the first championship since 1999. Before that, 1972, when Jay Conner led them, first by Glenn Field. Dom got the victory in 99, and this group has never been to the championship game. Neither of these teams have, but they'll take this one, clock winding down, and you're going to see the new champion of Division I be the Virginia Cavaliers. the intense pressure of Johns Hopkins. As you look at Dave Petramala, a storybook season for him. They did everything except beat the number two team who had also a tremendous year and a fast start for Virginia. They win nine to seven it was, and are the champions of It was a front running effort keyed by the play of their midfield, Chris Rotelli and A.J. Shannon. Shannon will finish this game with four goals. And at any time, Hopkins put a threat towards the cage. Tillman Johnson, unbelievable saves. Hopkins closed the margin to six to five, but Virginia showed a lot of poise down the stretch. They win it by two. Coming up next, our baseball game. Roger Clemens going for a win 300, an historic day in New York as he faces the Boston Red Sox. Our final score here, though, 9-7, to seven, a tremendous day. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.